What's up, Homestead homies? It's Off Good with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. And today we're going to talk about... What are we going to talk about today? Alkaline foods that you guys can... Oh, it's another health and nutrition video. <laughs> It's a lot about alkaline foods that we can put in our garden that'll be really healthy for our body. So we did the chicken feed one and that was a little bit ago. Now we're doing this one because basically everyone's getting ready to start planting their garden. So we're trying to get people hip on what things what they should put consider. In your garden. Yeah. Because sometimes there's like too many things to put in. It's like, well, I can only put this or I can put that. So, okay. So being healthy just depends pretty much on balancing what you eat. And it's really important that we eat foods that are alkaline to our bodies. Um, so when we plant our gardens, we want to have um, the foods that we eat, you know, give us the most vitamins and minerals and be the most, most beneficial to our bodies and be alkaline. And then you're saying, well, what does alkaline mean? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm asking what does alkaline mean? Well, alkaline, um, basically, like you look at a swimming pool, um, you ch do little strips to test and see if, if it's alkaline and you want your um, pH to be, you know, where you need it to be. And for the human body, 7.0 is neutral. And if you go below that, like 6.9, that's going to be acidic. And then when you look at a human, anywhere from like 7.35 to 7.4 is kind of where your body tries to stay to be. And your body generally is going to try to keep that range. It's going to regulate it. But unfortunately in our sad diet, standard American diet, we have a lot of highly processed foods like refined sugars, refined, um, you know, breads and flours. We're eating out a lot, having bad fats, um, a lot of meats and dairy, coffee, caffeine, um, sugar, sodas. So like you said, the pH, and, so that's like pH, like even like soil has a pH, right? right. And you want to have a good balance of pH. So the, the, what you're planting in the soil grows. Right. So it's also relevant for our bodies to have a good pH. So, you so want, we feel good and we have energy and we are healing ourselves and being good. Right. Because what you want to look at, your body is going to naturally try to keep you in that like homeostasis, keep you at that 7.3, 7.4 range. Well, if you keep making your body really acidic. Like if I'm eating hamburgers and french fries uh, all the time and ice cream okay those and are all cream, highly acidic foods which i really time. like all those <laughs> yeah but if you eat that all the time right and you're not getting some of these things that we're going to talk about today your body's going to be in that acidic, acidic state and it's going to constantly kind of be backpedaling it's sort of like putting gasoline dirty gasoline in a car it's not going to function properly it'll function but not 100 percent right and over time Sputtering. it can cause diseases cancers your immune system I mean, cause it your cause a lot of things. Right. so why not put these alkalizing type foods in your body to help your body work efficiently so that the body can thrive okay so before we get started on the remedy to this problem if somebody was listening to this video and they wanted to check their alkaline or ph how would they do that well, if you do, if you guys want to do that, you can get it. It's really cheap. You can go to any Walmart, any drugstore, and you can get pH strips. You get pH a whole bunch strips. of them, and you can test your pH. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very simple if you want to do it. Or if you just want to start changing how you eat, it'll be great. Because, unfortunately, we eat the, the SAD diet, the standard American diet, and we eat too much of the processed foods or just, like, meats and eggs and dairy and don't get all these other things in there then it just makes you not have any energy. It just makes you feel lethargic, doesn't yeah. it? You just feel icky. You, you maybe suffer you headaches, have inflammation. You can't have a piece of lettuce on your burger and say you're eating like a, that's not and a salad. And how many people said I had my greens <laughs> after I had a piece of tomato and a lettuce? Right, right, right. right. Lettuce, onions, and tomato on your cheeseburger is not going to do you any good. Right. Well, it's going to, you know, but it's not what we're shooting for. So I just kind of want to go over some of these things to make sure you guys are putting them in your garden. And your goal is to eat as many raw, of uh, raw things as right. you can. You know, cooking is okay, but eating them raw is just so much more beneficial. You're going to get so much bang for your buck. Cool. Okay. All right. What you got? Okay. The first one, some people don't have these native to their area, but the, like the most alkalizing thing that you could do for your body is to drink lemon water. So getting a lemon, squeezing it in the water, drinking it first thing in the morning, that's going to totally set your body straight. And you might say, well, it's kind of acid. Well, it is an acid, but once it gets in your body and goes through the digestive process, 
then you, um, it kind of it turns alkaline so that it helps the body to help detoxify and cleanse. So that is just a great one right there. Lemon one. water. Easy. Everyone can do it. So if they're already doing like the apple cider vinegar thing, would they squeeze a little lemon in that? You could do that or do that water. later in the day and then do the lemon water in the morning. But I'll lemon water it. in the morning would be, if you don't want to do anything else that I say, try to do that because it's wonderful. Just drink a huge, big glass of water with some lemon, warm squeeze water. Squeeze a half a lemon in it? Yeah. 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 Great. That's easy. Yeah. Number two are cayenne peppers. And we just did a video on that. So we'll link that above. And cayenne peppers are phenomenal. I mean, they are just way up there to help with that alkaline level. I mean, I think it's like 8.5 when you look at like it, where it ranks. But it's really, really good. Um, and the size of cayennes, they're the highest, but like bell peppers and red peppers, different kinds of peppers, all peppers. So if you are a pepper fanatic, you know, keep playing them because they're so beneficial. And if you're not, maybe start playing with them because there's so many types and so many flavors. So just incorporate peppers into your gardening this year. That's right. Right. Yeah. And most people can grow peppers um, and tomatoes and stuff, no problem. Yeah. Now, another, another one, and you guys all know about these, are your leafy greens. What are those? <laughs> like kales and spinaches and your collards. <coughs> you know, you got turnip greens, your beet greens. You know, all the greens, all those greens are phenomenal. Now, when you say like turnip greens and beet greens, is that just when they cut the... the the green leaves that come off of like the beet while the beet's right. in the ground. You want to utilize the whole plant. You don't right. want to just, or, you know, some people give them to their chickens, but, you know, you can take those greens and you can cook them. Cook them in some oil, maybe some butter. Would you just or, eat them raw too, though, with a salad? Um, like the beet greens are good. Uh, your turnip greens, Not no, really you definitely like, want to cook those. those yeah, 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 you got to cook those. A lot of, you know, kale you can cook, you can eat them raw. A lot of people might not even know that you could just snip the greens off of the beet plant while the beet's still growing and eat Oh, them. they're so healthy, so yeah. good for you. If you make smoothies, you can stick them in there too. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Now, on a little note here, I'm going to, since we're talking about greens, another one that's huge and it's your cheapest out of all of them are your wild edibles. The wild edibles are so high and they're free <laughs> they're in your yard and we did a little bit of video about uh, dandelions yeah. are phenomenal and we can link that one too yeah dandelion greens are great and then these greens i'm going to talk about are great especially when you want them young they're plantain great. plantain is one lamb's quarter lamb's quarter i love lamb's quarter i we had some growing and i let it grow and i had this huge patch of them um and the sheep love them too it's called wild um spinach <laughs> and um it tastes, it's great. And I just go pick it and I'll just put them in our salads and I'll get some dandelion greens and put them in your salads. Clover's another good one. The plantain's good one. And another one that's phenomenal are your nettles. So if you have that in your area, nettles are great. Um, you can a lot also, of that stuff just grows naturally. I mean, we have it like everywhere. outside, everywhere. We don't even do anything for it. So nettles, you can also dry out and turn them into a tea. And those mm. are all very, very helpful for the body. Nettle tea? Yeah. Kind of like your pine needle tea? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So just kind of went off on the rampant, but um, the wild edibles are in there too. So you can put them with the greens. Now something, and it's not native everywhere, our avocados are wonderful. Yeah. And there's a big kick for avocados now, but avocados are good and tomatoes are also good too. Yeah. So you got your avocados, tomatoes, and then if I talk some other citrus, you know, it would, it would be um, limes and grapefruits. Oranges are a little different, so I would not put that in the list. Right. But you're, because they don't, they have more sugar. But the lemons and limes and grapefruits don't have as much sugar. So those are really good for the body. What about grapes? Um, fruits are good. Generally, this is how I want you guys to think about. When you eat, fruits have sugar, just like if you have a cookie. Sure. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, fruits are good for me. and I'm going to eat a lot of them. But too much sugar isn't good. So my rule of thumb is eat what is in season. Right. And you got cuckoo. Eat what's in season. Um, so like we planted our apples. Apples are a, a good food too. So like when apples are in season, we'll eat apples, but I'm not going to eat, you know, 10 a day. I know, but if the um, fruits are sugary, like a cookie, how come I always like to eat the cookie more than the fruit? <laughs> because you have a sweet tooth. Okay, and you were talking about grapes. Those are all great. So my thing is, is if you're going to eat fruit, have your piece of fruit or so, um, you know, one a day and eat what's in season, but don't overdo it. Now, would there be a time of day you would recommend The best time that? really to eat your fruit is in the morning around morning to lunchtime. Right. And as the day goes on, then you just want to concentrate on other things. Right. Um, 
but let me go on. I don't want to forget all my little alkalizing foods. So then we have, um, you just talked about the fruit, and right. then we also have carrots are really good. Right. Broccoli is phenomenal. Radishes are wonderful, and some of your um, your root vegetables, they're all really good too. Right. Which yeah. is a great time. Here we go. We're, that's why we're trying to give you guys these videos so you can plan your garden accordingly. You might not have been thinking about making uh, in your garden some of these things we're talking about, and maybe you'll give it a try. Kale, lettuce. Some people just maybe do lettuce, head lettuce. Maybe try kale or spinach. But if you want more bang for your buck, try to get these the big greens, you know, like Swiss chard, um, your spinaches and your kales and, and all those and, and some of your greens like mustard greens and things like that because they're going to be getting a lot more bang for your buck. Right. Now, I have one more and I'm going to put a grouping. Your other one are your herbs because, you know, we're looking at these foods. They're all going to be very helpful and if you're suffering from um, inflammation, you know, different diseases that cause inflammation, even if you have back problems, sciatica, all these things, these are all great things to do. And actually we've implement. had a couple of people ask us about sciatica and stuff, so if you're listening, if you're watching this video, this is gonna help with, that, with those inflammations Definitely. that cause that. And he, here's my last one, are, are your herbs, healing herbs. These are huge. I know a lot of people have these big gardens and they don't put any herbs. Well, the herbs are huge. Like when we have our big salads, I make sure that, that we get herbs in, in the salads. You cook with the herbs, but then you want those herbs in their in their raw form. So these are the best ones here. Parsley is huge because, like I say, besides being alkalizing, they're also filled with vitamins and minerals. Um, parsley, cilantro, basil, garlic, and onions are always great too. You know to put them up there too. And ginger. Now this year, and I hadn't done it before. I was going to do it last year. Um, I'm going to plant ginger. So if you have a, you know, a warm season that you can grow, you can grow. It's just a root, just like horseradish. So if you can grow horseradish, you can grow ginger. So I'm going to do ginger this year, a ton of it. And then, you know, I'm going to save it because it'll last quite a long time. So those are healing and they're great for inflammation and they're just wonderful things. So, you know, start putting these in your garden, you know, and, and have spots for them because they're phenomenal. So those would be my, my choices mint would be another good one too i don't know why but i just keep thinking in my mind that most people like ginger but i always like marianne <laughs> yeah who did you like let us know did you like <laughs> ginger or marianne or how about the professor gilligan you like uh, our old school uh, tv <laughs> references i try to squeeze them in when i can yeah yeah all right yeah so what else i think oh and then just one more thing this doesn't have anything to do with your um, vegetables or things that you're going to grow in your garden but also we talk about being alkaline and, and helping the body to be more functional, to keep it at that good alkaline state without having to work too hard. Adding your Himalayan pig sea salt is another one that is very good for the body, believe it or not. So when you use your food, that um, Himalayan pig sea salt is the best because you have the most trace minerals and it has a mild flavor and it's wonderful. So if you're not using that salt, switch over to it because it's great. Yeah, it's a little bit of work being healthy, isn't it? Well, all it is is once you get it, you'll be fine. Well, you, yeah. know, you always get back what you put in. I mean, if you don't want to be healthy and you want to eat the sad diet and be sad all the time, then you can do that. But if you want to have a more vibrant, healthy life and not get sick when everybody else is getting sick, then you eat better. That's right. It, it takes a little work. Nothing, what do they say? Nothing worth having um, is it worth working for, you know, to, to moving towards or whatever. Something like that, yep. isn't it? Yeah. And that's yeah. all I have to say for today. Wow. So get your gardens going. All right. Get healthy. Now you guys got to go get your paper and your pencil and then watch this video two times and then write all the stuff. Yeah, down. and share it. Share yeah, it with share somebody it. or give us a thumbs up. Right, because we're, we're drawing uh, in. The end of this month is the um, the honey giveaway, the one gallon of honey from the homestead. That's so right. Hopefully we're you guys are, track. We got a couple people that are killing it. So hopefully you guys so can keep up. Some of you up. guys keep on it. That's, That's right. right. So this is Off Good with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode. See you later. It's about the homestead chicken food. It's our secret ancient Chinese recipe uh, that we perfected over the four